there's a lot of Pokemon categories. You've got your starters, legendaries, Pikachu clones, mythicals, pangas, regional bugs, pseudo legendaries, but the most out there and unique bundle of mons are definitely the ultra beasts. Like, they barely even refer to them as Pokemon, so like, are they? Yes. If we found an animal like life form on Venus or something, would it be an animal? Yes. The Ultra Beasts are Pokemon from Ultra Space, basically interdimensional Pokemon. And no, they are not legendaries. Common misconception. They do share plenty of traits with legendaries, though. High stats, story prominence, caught in special events towards the end of the regional Pokedex. This and more is why there's so much confusion about that. But in their home dimensions, they are as common as, like, I don't know, Pikachu. And also, no official media has ever equated them to legendaries. They are their own thing. They are Ultra Beasts. And here's a fun thing. On top of all being aliens, all of the Ultra Beasts are based on invasive species, as well as just things that have completely taken over most of the world. This was actually confirmed by Shigeru Omori in an interview in the Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, the official Alola Region Pokedex and Postgame Adventure Guide book. I like to call it Pispm Twar P -p Bag. So what is an invasive species? Well, easy. It's one that doesn't belong in the area it's currently in and is thriving, wreaking havoc on the local ecosystem. Islands are particularly susceptible to this, and several Several invasive species have been introduced to Hawaii over the ages. First rats, stowaways on ships, and then mongooses to hunt the rats. And then they proceeded to do more damage to the ecosystem. And house cats! Egad! There are so many bird species that go extinct each year due solely to people letting their cats outside. Do not let your cats outside! And if you absolutely must, eh, just give them a bell collar. It warns the birds of their presence. But yes, house cats, feral or not, are indeed an invasive species as well. They alien to the ecosystems they now find themselves in. Ecosystems that were not at all prepared for their existence. Quick example, there's the kakapo. It lives in New Zealand and is a now flightless bird. It came to the island with wings, but after living here for so long, it lost its ability to fly in exchange for stockier bodies. These let them survive here better. And they didn't need flight here because they had no land-based predators for eons. Had. <laughs> House cats are thriving there now, so the kakapo is scheduled to go extinct in the wild soon. It's not an if, it's a when. And as human expansion and climate change continue, house cats will thrive more and more, and take over more and more territory. Just like the inspiration of the first Ultra Beast, Nihiligo, the jellyfish. Which is brought to you, which is brought to you by today's sponsor, Raycon's Everyday Earbuds. Which are called that because they are so comfortable you can wear them every day. Because the intelligently designed gel tips fit so snug, they won't easily fall out. But even if they do and they fall into a pool, you're good. They're water resistant and noise resistant. Though I think the term is noise isolation. Yeah, yeah, they got noise isolation. Get some peace and quiet this holiday season as the little ones do this. <laughs> Oh, they never tire out. They're just like Raycons. They've got eight hour battery life and the included charging case will give them an extra 32. If Paramosa had ears, she would get one in every color because they are so sleek and fashionable. Who needs two little white stems sticking out of their ears? Ick! They make a great and affordable gift as they come in at just half of the price of other premium audio brands. And if you use my link, which I have kindly left below for you, buyraycon.com slash Loxton and use the coupon code EARLYBF, which stands for Early Black Friday, not Early Boyfriend, you can get 20% off of anything with that, or even 30% off of Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. Wow! What an ultra good deal. Beastly, even. So now, about Nihiligo. First of all, jellyfish already have that alien -y appearance, just like your typical War of the Worlds aliens or the aliens from Metal Slug, and it being a parasite that lives by feeding on people and Pokemon, as well as latching onto people's heads and changing their personalities. Yeah, it falls in line with plenty of alien tropes. It messes with the ego, a part of the mind. It's perhaps primarily based on the moon jellyfish or the floating bell. I mean, its shiny color even reflects the moon jellyfish's bioluminescence. But how is it an invasive species? Well, jellyfish are constantly on the hunt, devouring anything they can paralyze and hold on to. Look at that fish. It's paralyzed. It got turned into a little nihilist, hasn't it? No point in living. No point in trying to fight. Catching prey is tricky for a jellyfish, though, because only about 10% of a jellyfish is muscle. And also, they have no brains, so they kind of just aimlessly wander, like a nihilist. However, the moon jellyfish is special. Normally, a jellyfish squeezes its body to form a jet of water to propel it forward in the ocean, but the 
moon jelly is able to create a second jet of water as it relaxes its muscles. So basically, it's always moving, even when not specifically pushing. And this incredible efficiency in its power has made it into an efficient predator for a jellyfish. And it's able to hunt in huge areas, so large that it has become an invasive species basically everywhere. It can easily wander the ocean in search of new areas to proliferate. Anywhere it goes, it's a wonderful predator. And thanks to overfishing, these jellyfish have no real competition for the food, and they also have basically no predators. Because when you're basically a floating plastic bag with no nutrients or brain, yeah, they're completely devoid of most nutrients, so they have no real predators other than sea turtles, which are dying out a bit too, largely due to them confusing actual plastic bags for jellyfish. But yeah, and the lack of brains, Nihiligo has a Pokedex entry that says it's unclear whether or not this Pokemon is sentient. They really just keep pounding in that nihilism aspect, ain't they? But yes, there is an overabundance of these jellyfish, and they are becoming a real issue in marine ecological balance. And worst of all, these darn near nutritionally worthless things do even better in warmer oceans. So as the globe continues warming degree by degree, they thrive more and more, and they also prefer more acidic water with less oxygen. And guess what else is happening to the oceans? Yeah! Ocean acidification, baby! That's a big part of what inspired Galarian Corsola, which we did a whole other sad video on. Check it out later. But yes, the waters around Hawaii are flooded with invasive jellyfish, and they are likely to only thrive more and more as time goes on, invading more and more regions of water. And in the case of the floating bell jellyfish, we actually know how it got into Hawaiian waters. They hitched a ride on a boat in 1945 and was just dumped in the Hawaii area. Great. So now, why is Nihiligo rock poison type and why does it look like Lily? Well, the latter is simple. Lusamine, the leader of the Aether Foundation and mother of Lily, is obsessed with Ultra Beast, so she dresses her daughter this way. This is also why Lily changing clothes is a big part of her character development later on. And the typing is simpler too, honestly. Poison is because it's jellyfish. It's got poison barbs and neurotoxins that cause fish to get paralyzed or swim in uneven corkscrews. What is even the point of life? Rock, though. I guess it's taking the glass-like appearance, literally. It's like a glass jellyfish, but literal glass, which is made of rocks after all. Rocks that are great for smashing! Boswall! A freaking bodybuilder common rider hero mosquito? The heck is that about? The black stripes on its body even resemble the comic book and manga shading that accentuates the muscles on superheroes. Well, it sure does go buzz buzz, the sounds that small flying insects make, and it's swole, slang for being buff, rip even. Heavily muscled. It's a big boy. Which I guess is a funny juxtaposition to a scrawny little wimp bug like a mosquito. But actually, I like how Buzzful drinks the energy from other Pokemon to swell up its muscles. Mosquitoes drink blood and also swell up all big. Look at this mosquito butt. It's just like Buzzful's arms now. And this method of feeding is also kind of similar to another alien media trope. The aliens invading Earth simply to eat us. It's kind of similar. Buzzful's pattern seems most similar to the Asian tiger mosquito or forest mosquito. And this little bugger is one of the most invasive pest species in the world. Yeah, they live basically everywhere, and their territory is expanding as the world warms, but its homeland is Southeast Asia, hence the name. Uh, but get this, here's another reason why it's thriving. Most mosquitoes live in swamps and wetlands, places not really great for human dwellings. But this tiger mosquito, thanks to its adaptability, it now seems to live mostly in city environments, and goes out to feed during the daytime when most people are out, rather than just dawn and dusk like most other mosquitoes. Meaning, yes, as more people happen, so too will more of these mosquitoes. Which also only need, like, half an inch of stagnant water to breed. So, like, the inside of a spare tire? A forgotten pot or plate? Left out children's toys? A bottle cap? Yeah, these mosquitoes love litter. As in, they make love and make babies in litter. Litter with water on it. Great. But now, what's with the shiny color? Buzzswole is one of the worst-looking shiny Pokémon in the franchise. Might be a reference to green alien blood, but no, because the blood sack parts are still red. Is it because of midges, which are green and are related to mosquitoes, but don't bite so they wouldn't get swole, so maybe not? Is it because of green weightlifting straps, which actually come in any color, so why green? 
Yeah, let's just go with clothing can be any color. So let's make it a green screen. Ah, uh, because with the green screen technology, you can make it any color. Haha, <laughs> look, I'm on this guy's bitty bits now. Speaking of these bits, another fun fact here is that only female mosquitoes suck blood. So even though Buzz Swole looks more masculine, are they a she? When partnered with Pheromosa, is Buzz Swole a butch? A bugch? A bugch? There's a pun somewhere there. I'm just bad at it. Oh well, a swole queen either way. And Buzz Swole and Pheromosa are paired up pretty often, which makes sense. They were revealed at the same time, are version exclusives to each other, and are the same type. They even have a couple cards together. It's cute. Look, the card even comes in pride colors. The gay is strong. So let's talk about Pheromosa now. Pheromosa is sort of the opposite of Buzz Swole, but as stated, they are the same types. Bug fighting, because they are bugs, and they do fighting. Yeah. Pheromosa is very thin and very elegant, very, very white too. More alien tropes. The pale, moist, and lanky super advanced aliens. Yeah. Grays. On top of this, Pheromosa appears primarily like a freshly molted American cockroach, which despite the name is native to Africa and the Middle East. So yes, it's invasive. And again, live and thrive basically everywhere people do thanks to good old human crumbs. Just like everywhere. And for a long time, cockroaches have about the same lifespan as a mouse around 700 days, which is very long for a bug. Pheromosa is also known for its incredible speed, much like how roaches are portrayed in media. And when encountered, they typically scatter to rapidly hide. Oh yeah, and they can fly. <laughs> I hate that. Thankfully, the wings on the roach become the hair on Pheromosa, so Pheromosa cannot fly. But while that roach ability is lost, there are others they share. Roaches are also known for their hardiness and are a resilient bug that reproduces incredibly fast. The perfect invasion force. Fast, armored, and there's more where those came from, as Pheromosa may also draw inspiration from copepods, basically sea bugs that share some similarities with roaches, and similarly, are stinking everywhere. The Wikipedia page even says they are found in nearly every freshwater and saltwater habitat. Like, here's a question, is it water? If yes, there's copepods in it, and microplastics. And Pheromosa's lashes sort of resemble copepod eyes, don't they? Fun design fact! Just in case you hadn't noticed, Buzzswole and Pheromosa are both almost opposites of their species design. Mosquitoes are typically small, not large and buff, and cockroaches are gross and disgusting, not elegant or pretty. And as for more alien tropes, it's the brainwashing. Pheromosa's name combines hermosa, Spanish for beautiful, with pheromone, as it uses pheromones to make others awestruck by its appearance. And also, it hates getting dirty and touching dirty things, which is also a bit of an alien trope. Extraterrestrial germs are a terrible thing. It's what took out the aliens in War of the Worlds, after all. Humans had no chance of fighting against them, but thankfully our germs took them out. And also, Pheromosa looks like Lusamine for the same reasons that Lily and Nihiligo, Nihiligo, I have to look up how it's pronounced every time I say it, but I won't this time, own the bad with wordsness. Uh, yeah, Lusamine is obsessed with ultra beasts, and so she is the one dressing like them. In this case, business chic. Pheromosa's shiny even looks more like a supermodel showing off the latest office worker fashion. But even still, that might not be all. Pheromosa, along with Cartana and Celestila, could be based on the Japanese tale of the best. Bamboo cutter, and we'll talk more about that in our next Ultra Beast video, which you can check out here when it's out. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. Also, who would win in a battle royale? This isn't foreshadowing.